Okay, welcome to part two. This is the soup du jour part. Wait, episode two. Yes. We, this is the soup du jour. Well, what is the soup du jour? Well, it is the soup of the day. Mmm, that sounds good. I'll have that. Great, because the soup du jour is the second part of our podcast episode where we can talk about TV or movie news and other TV and movie related topics. And today we are going to be talking about our top five movies of 2023. So this is going to be a bit of a tough one. Oh, okay. Um, I guess, Ken, do you want to go first on this? Give, uh, give our audience a chance to write theirs down. Let us know what they might be thinking in the chat. Um, but yeah, let, why don't you go first? Sure. And, and just so you know, I mean, obviously we took a longer than normal hiatus. And so we're about two months into 2024. So we're a little bit, I, we're, we understand that we're a little late to the whole top five movies of 2023. But hey, you know what? Everyone's moved on. And so it gives us a chance to kind of have the spotlight for the top five movies of 2023. And so um, let me get into my list. And so with apologies to movies like The Killers of the Flower Moon and Past Lives, which are movies that I do want to watch and have not watched yet, um, they're not going to be on my list. But I'm looking forward to eventually watching those two movies specifically and others uh, that were maybe nominated. So uh, let me get into my honorable mentions. Uh, this may surprise some of you in the chat and maybe even Jeremy. Honorable mention, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. <laughs> I was just <laughs> <laughs> And uh, one more honorable mention just outside my top five i have iron claw which we did watch during our hiatus and so um that was a good movie that was very sad though i don't know how rewatchable that movie is but yeah oh, it's so a good, good movie another 824 classic right there and so without further ado here is my top five starting with number five mission impossible dead reckoning part one i'm actually surprised that this was actually lower than it than i had anticipated but it is at number five number four i have godzilla minus one also a movie oh. that we watched during our hiatus um i was i was completely invested in this movie it was such a uh surprise and uh oh it's so good i i'm looking forward to godzilla v king uh kong i guess but I don't know. I just kind of want to compare the two, even though I don't think it's going to be as good. Number three, uh, the top three were just kind of settled in um, and shouldn't be a surprise to those who are fans of this podcast. Number three, I have John Wick Chapter 4. Number two, I have Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. <gasps> and at number one, to no one's surprise, I am a Nolan boy, Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Okay. I... For some reason, once you got once you got closer to part or number one, I forgot yeah. about Oppenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Wait a minute!" Across the Spider Verse number two. What's yeah? What's it, it really is one and one A, one A, one B. Well, you know, they they were uh, they're interchangeable. Really, I wouldn't have a problem with Across the Spider Verse number one. Um, yeah, because uh, you know, Sean said yeah. Guardians three not in the top five is criminal. What do you think about yeah. that, Ken? Um, I could see that. I, I don't know. I, I guess it's, I think a big part of it is, um, superhero movie fatigue for me. Uh, I, to be honest with you, I didn't have high expectations going in because I feel like now we're probably in the minority and thinking volume two was very mid, I think. I was disappointed with volume two. And so I didn't really have expectations for volume three. Um, I had I for the for most of the year I had it at, in my top five, but again, two movies that we watched during our hiatus actually kind of jumped it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So it's uh, Sean though. Let let us know your top five. I know you have opinions on Ken's, <laughs> but let us know what's in your top five. I'm curious to know. What <laughs> that was actually what I thought my top five would look like. Actually, <laughs> I, yeah, this... I have no problem with Sean's. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is I don't I think he's saying those other four are are good. Mm-hmm. Except for not including Guardians three. I think that's what he's saying. Yeah. Well, I, that's what he's I don't know if he's seen um, Godzilla minus one, but if he hasn't, woo. Yeah, Godzilla minus treat. one is really good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for me, in my honorable mention, starting with that, I I was gonna say Iron Claw. Uh, I mentioned the movie last week, The Killer, with Michael Fassbender, directed by David Fincher. Uh, Netflix movie, I think. Is very much a me movie. <laughs> like I don't think many people uh, would like it. I think, but I definitely enjoyed it a lot. Uh, but in my number five, I'm going with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. I liked it. Definitely a good send off for for that group of Guardians. Agree. Number four, also. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. I, I don't want to say part one anymore because I think they're doing like part two is like going to be something called something different. Oh, they um, I didn't even I didn't even mention. I didn't even see that. I missed yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. This is where it gets a little weird. Uh, I put Susume. Ooh. Uh, just because in it came out in Japan in 2022 but have a U.S. release in January 2023. And then we were able to watch it together, talk about it in the pod. Uh, that's my number three. And number two, Spider-Man, Across the Spider-Verse. And number one, John Wick, Chapter 4. Ooh. Just because uh, I, mean, like, I was flip-flopping between those two for number one. Could change on the day. But John Wick, Chapter 4... I think they should just leave it there. I think he, like, as much as by the end, I was like, ah, oh, he, I, well, I don't want to say too much just in case people haven't seen it, I guess. But uh, I liked it a lot. <laughs> I noticed there was a um, huge omission from your top five. Yes, no Oppenheimer. I know. I, did, I don't think it was, it's honestly, thinking about it now, my least favorite favorite Chris Nolan film that is nonfiction. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll rewatch that what you just said and I'll I'll probably understand <laughs> what you <laughs> It's like a Christopher Nolan movie. So like you gotta rewatch what I just said. Um Sean Tierra said expecting Jeremy to say Barbie. Funny enough Sean, I didn't watch Barbie until this year. Um I want to say the first hour I liked more than the second hour. For sure. Barbie's Except in my top 10. Except for the Just Ken song. That's, yeah. oh. That deserved to win the awards <laughs> of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Barbie's in my top 10 as well as uh, Susume. Just, I think the, that's the only other movie that you mentioned that wasn't in any of my honorable mentions. But those other two are in my top 10. So... I mentioned nine movies. <laughs> oh, Jan says, same though. First hour was so good. Yeah, Barbie. Barbie's, uh, I would, Barbie would be on a lot of people's lists. Let's go party. And you got to see it in theaters, right, Ken? I, I did. I did the Barbenheimer um, double feature, actually. Uh, I wanted to do Oppenheimer first because I wanted to end with something more light, lighthearted. So I watched Oppenheimer a second time just to make sure I didn't miss anything on opening night. Um, and then I watched Barbie right after and I enjoyed it. I'm glad I watched it in that order too, because um, I left in a really good mood and I can see how a lot of people were affected by that movie and found a deeper meaning to it. And I, um, I enjoy all opinions and, and, uh, about the movie, I, I I respect the fact that it uh, touched a lot of people in a lot of different ways, you know, from just an entertainment perspective, but also in a deeper life meaning as well. So, um, and I could see that. I, I thought America Pharaoh was so good in this movie. Yeah, the um, the scene where Barbie talks with the 
the creator of Barbie. Um, I think I, for some reason that, that that hit me more than I was expecting it to. Or yeah, I just did not expect it at all. I was like, okay. Uh, for show, Jax also said, "Do docs count to documentaries?" I would definitely count it. Those are real. Those are movies. I enjoyed the Step Curry one on Apple TV Plus. Oh, not I sponsored. wonder if that's what he's talking about. Uh, probably not. Maybe no. I don't know. <laughs> Sean also says, "Just saying, Barbie because of Ryan Gosling, literally <laughs> us." I mean, just ask uh, this guy. I'm pointing the wrong way. This guy. <laughs> Just ask Ken. I am just Ken. Ooh, yeah. here we go. We got for show Jax's number five, Gran Turismo. Oh shoot, forgot about that movie. Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that because I that was actually my uh, one last thing from the very first episode of the Soup Du Jour last week. Uh, I enjoyed Gran Turismo, even though I was late to the party. And then he's got minus one on there. Uh, Mission Impossible 4. Underrated, number two. And then Oppie. Oh, that's Steph Curry. The underrated is that Steph Curry uh, documentary that he was uh, asking about. Dang, that is pretty high. To put it right next to Oppenheimer. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. I'm uh, telling you, man. I, I, I believe, I truly believe, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. that because you haven't seen it a second time and you've only watched it starting at 10.30 in the evening, but really 10.50 <laughs> in the evening with That's trailers, true. after a really long day, I truly believe Oppenheimer would vault to your top five if you actually watched it again. Uh, I see. I mean, maybe. I almost put the, like, there was another movie that I feel like that I just enjoy much more. Like, I'll mention it later. Iron Claw, I think I liked more. Um, it's because we're wrestling fans. Yeah, because we're wrestling fans. We felt that. Which I got to say, you got to check out the show. Uh, it's canceled now, but it's called Heels mm. uh, on Stars. That's why we haven't really seen it. I don't have stars, man. But, dude, like, the, the wrestling in that movie, kind of like, it's like small town wrestling and just this fictionalized family. And, I don't know, the drama's so good, and we love wrestling. Um, Jax also says, Oppie, especially watching it twice, was really good. The storytelling, the complimentary score, and the visuals and cinematics just brought it to a whole different level. I love the music, like you said, um, Jax, about, like, freaking Hans Zimmer. It's like, only if his Dune soundtrack... I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Every time. Every time. Oh, here we go. Jan also says, I also loved Wonka. Have you seen Wonka, Ken? I have not, but I did. that was one of the movies that... Uh... I'll include that with uh, Past Lives and Killers of the Flower Moon of movies towards the end of 2023 that I still haven't gotten a chance to watch. Uh, I hear good things. Plus, it stars Paul Atreides. <laughs> That's true. Paul Atreides is in it. Tom from Interstellar. Atreides! 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 I, I'm telling the uh, audience right now, I haven't finished my rewatch of Dune Part 1 yet. I am... 40 minutes into it and i'm still having some of the same and i there's some things that are better but there are definitely the i was like ah oh, no wonder i didn't like this part <laughs> wait what are you talking about uh um spo spoilers from here on out for for part one uh part one. i guess for just this one part i guess yeah for the first 40 minutes like in the beginning when um uh paul atreides just like listening to an audio book pretty much and it's just like super exposition yeah and he's just sitting there i was like bro this is the best this... you could think of for world building is have your main character listen to an audiobook it's like yeah i mean it actually accomplished its thing because like i'm like oh yeah i remember that audiobook because that audiobook was for me the viewer you know you know where they have in sometimes in those movies like i don't know wonder woman or something they have something visual to show you as they explain stuff, they don't even have that in this movie. 
It was a hologram. Was it? See, I, I don't even. They remember. did that. They did that. A weird sandwalk thing uh, that uh, the Fremen do. Come on, man. See, I don't know, man. Like it's, but I love the way the movie looks. Like the the props, the costumes. Um, Paul Atreides, I did not like him the first viewing. It's he's grown on me in some scenes so far in the first 40 minutes so hopefully uh he gets me in the next two hours i don't know i feel like thanos and cal drogo were um really good they were yeah i really like their scenes that uh, the one two scenes that they were in (laughs) (laughs) um i i really can't wait to talk about uh do part two next week yeah so my running joke when you see me next week um about talking about part two, I'll be like, I love part one. Um, I'm I'm gonna laugh so hard if you become a fanboy for Dune. <laughs> eventually, I, mean, I hope so. I hope so. Like, I would like it. Looks like a really good franchise. It's just the world building for me is not there. But anyway, Jax, he says I've been waiting to see past lives. Oh, so have I. I've not seen it yet. Uh, heard it was really good. 2023 was kind of a downer for me in terms of movies in theaters. But seeing the movies coming out this year, I am so hyped. Uh, Jax, you got to let us know what are some of your anticipated movies then for this year. Yeah, the... If 2023 <clears throat> was kind of meh, you know? Let us know well, maybe you might want to save that for Soup Du Jour Episode 3 because we may be talking mm, about that. Yeah. So... A lot of movies coming out this year. Uh, There was another movie that's in the comments by Sean. Sean. (laughs) Dang, nobody said, saying Meg 2, the emotion, the cinematography (laughs) was a whole different level. (laughs) Definitely, it was on a level. Um, It was a different level. I haven't seen it. Because I didn't see Meg 1, obviously. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. So who knows, Sean? Maybe you're you're totally right. It could be the Paddington 2 of sequels. Um or Footloose. Or fo- is it the best? Is it the best movie <laughs> ever? Ever made? It never was. It never was. Man, you got Sean. I know you haven't seen Footloose. You got to see Footloose. Uh, Jan also says, "Dude, you got to watch the movie in one sitting." Yeah, dude. Yeah. So, not that I did this now. last time. I I fell asleep. <laughs> wow. <laughs> did you just? Admit, see, look at this, guys. I didn't fall asleep during noon. I watched it late, though. I started it like, uh, what time did I start it? At 10. Still. And that was after a, oh, that was after a long day of driving, too. You know what it was, though? I, I stopped watching yesterday because um, I went to go play Helldivers 2. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait! Why don't you talk about the related movie that uh, you were comparing Hell Divers to? Oh, too, since dude. this is a movie podcast, yeah. Like whoever hasn't seen Starship Troopers before, just go see it. Whether you haven't seen or haven't played Hell Divers two, from the opening scene of Starship Troopers, it's literally Hell Divers two, and it's just about you know finding your place in the universe, killing some bugs for democracy. <laughs> and patriotism, becoming a citizen. That's all you need. Paul Verhoeven. I'm surprised I didn't watch that movie when I was like 10 years old. That I would have loved that movie. <laughs> um, I missed this comment earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, show Jack says that 2022, uh, 2022 finals run for the Warriors was existential. Um, That was the uh, part, uh, half of the subject uh, as far as the foundation for underrated, the Steph Curry, um, what do you call it? The Steph Curry documentary. They they, they dove deep into him, you know, being underweight, undersized point guard in a very small uh, college in Davidson. So they got to chronicle... um, you know how he grew up uh the son the the older son of del curry and right into his college career into that 2022 finals run the production was very top-notch you could tell apple threw 
a lot of money into that. It was very well produced. See, there's some things I'm just missing off of Apple TV Plus um, that I definitely need to go see. Yeah. Well, I mean, now that you're on Team Blue Bubble, for don't now. you have access to Apple TV? I mean, Plus? I, I'm not paying for it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I guess technically I could. Yeah. You know. I mean, a certain other person in your household is at least for now. To my I understanding. think. Understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. My brother. I don't know if uh, he still <laughs> has it or not. I yeah. gotta double check. Um, yeah. Sean also said, "Think Guardians one that I even know Footloose, our legendary hero Kevin Bacon." <laughs> yes, the hero Kevin Bacon. Um, hey Sean, have you seen the uh, the the holiday I, special? I was gonna ask exactly that. <laughs> the Guardians holiday special with with Kevin Bacon. Starring, which I am so glad yeah. he was there before yeah. Guardians disbanded. Yeah, it was so good. What? Did, by the way, what? I don't know if we talked about it. What did you think of the holiday special? I love the holiday special. It's like it's a good. I I, I kind of don't like the the animation little thing, the Star Wars Christmas special anime uh, animation that they have. But you know that's not like the main thing. It's nostalgia, but, bro. It's the, yeah. how we used to like animate stuff before <laughs> all these fancy gadgets. You know. That's just you, man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, um, no, I still like it. I love it overall. It's a 30, 40 minutes. It yeah. made the ending of Guardians three like that much more sad because oh, it was man. about it's like everything in the Christmas special was like took place in that same room too. Mm-hmm. Like Kevin Bacon was there. He honestly mm-hmm. he should be in the next Guardians team. Yeah, Guardians Volume Three had all the feels. Um, it's pretty crazy that Rocket was the whole... He was the protagonist. We were working for him. We didn't realize you and I were working for me this whole time. Rocket, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, like uh, uh, Tenet. We watched Tenet this past Sunday. Yeah. That's insane. Sorry, I butchered that one Tenet line uh, from uh, from the protagonist. From the protagonist. At the end. Uh, I don't know if this is a hot take. I'm just going to say it. I like the Tenet soundtrack more than the Oppenheimer soundtrack. Sorry, Hans. Mm. Do better. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a hot take. I, well, because Ludwig d- did both of those. Oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> Hans has been busy with your favorite movie franchise, Doom. <laughs> no wonder they were so good. <laughs> no, nah, but I, I feel like um, I don't think that's a hot take in that um, because Oppenheimer is more of a period piece in terms of the actual setting obviously it has more of the existential uh overall message of how it relates to 2023 2024 like basically present day to how things were back in the what 40s um it's more versatile because i mean 10 it's just a thrill ride from start to finish in terms of the entropy start to finish or finish to start oh you see what i did there (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> oh man that was a ride though when we rewatched tenant mm. love that movie brought back memories of the pandemic man it did man i was still <laughs> stuck in 2020 watching that movie yeah um not a perfect movie but it's rewatchable for sure probably a fourth time fifth time watching that movie yeah it's ear it's eerily similar 2024 is eerily similar to 2020 in that there's a lot of stuff that's just happening again we're we're talking about the uh it being a presidential election year Mm -hmm. the niners loss in heartbreaking fashion to the chiefs again um tenet got (laughs) re-released in theaters (laughs) again (laughs) it's like we're it's like deja vu man yeah and movies are getting pushed uh well one before there was a pandemic now uh writers because of strike the strikes stuff. yeah the it's like, strikes. Oh, it is deja vu yeah that's pretty crazy um see for show jacks i don't work for you i realize we've been wor- both working for me <laughs> <laughs> that's the line thank you for show jacks i mean it helps that we're with us when we watched <laughs> seriously <laughs> oh man okay well 
keep keep your comments going as we we wrap up our live stream but can we have one last thing we want to share um you know what have you been watching this week or maybe not even this week um that you because we've been talking about movies of 2023 i would open it up to that too what would you want to recommend to our audience listening and watching right now well, I am a big proponent, especially since we started this uh, podcast, of going out in theaters because uh, a lot of the actors that put in their hard work and obviously even the writers that write these scripts, um, they need to be supported by us going to the theaters. And so I try to do my part. Uh, the movie that I want to uh, recommend for one last thing is a movie that I watched uh, last week, it came out earlier this month. It's Bob Marley One Love. It's currently out in theaters. It actually, surprisingly for me, had a Rotten Tomatoes score of just 42%, but I enjoyed it much, much more. I would have given it a fresh score of 1920 out of 3000, which is about 64%. Um, yeah, I, I think it could have been better. Um, which is why it probably came out in February. I feel like these released <laughs> months kind of give me a, a, a clue as far as what my expectations would be. But I think if this movie would have uh, um, garnered uh, more uh, attention as far as Oscar buzz, this would have been a type of movie that would have came out in like November, December during Oscar season. Um, but I enjoyed it. The good vibes. It just made me want to go to a tropical island uh, and listen to Bob Marley uh, on a beach somewhere sipping on Mai Tais or some pina coladas. So uh, even though there is a political message to this whole thing as well, but I, I don't know. I just get in a groove listening to Bob Marley. There you go. I think that's, I haven't seen it yet, but I want to check that one out. Uh, another one I haven't seen that I want to check out is called Ordinary Angels with Hil Hilary Swank and, uh, Reacher's Alan Richson. That looks really good. I want to still go see that. Another small movie that's out in theaters. It actually has an 80, which we're also not covering here on the pod, but it has 83%. So that's one I want Ooh. to go see in theaters. Looks like a good like drama, family drama kind of movie. But um, in terms of 2023, another honorable mention I want to mention was The Covenant with uh jake gyllenhaal and uh directed by guy ritchie i think that's on amazon right now that almost made my that's in like in my top 10 so okay good in my to know. 2023 list good to know that it's streaming on prime yeah i think still it's still not sponsored there. yeah definitely not sponsored <laughs> <laughs> we're bringing we're bringing it back I, there was a period of time where we just stopped with our trademarks but uh we're back with our trademarks in full force yeah, yeah. Well, if that is it for the comments section, always keep dropping those comments section or comments. Um, we'll always get to them even after the live show ends. Uh, and yeah, so it's been fun, huh, Ken? Seeing everyone here. Yes, it has been fun. It's always good to interact with our uh, audience, our live audience. It's good to just kind of encourage that dialogue between uh, us two as far as uh, podcasts through, what, six plus seasons now. And it's finally good to kind of interact with those who have supported us through six plus seasons or even just picking us up for this brand new season now that we're incorporating this whole new world of video. Yes, thank you for joining on joining us on this wild ride. I hope you like talking about Argyle, our top five movies of 2023. Keep keep submitting those. Um, but next week we will be talking about my most anticipated episode <laughs> of <laughs> of the season. That's gonna be Dune Part Two, and we'll have other fun movie topics to talk about. And if you have any ideas, anything you want to talk about, you know, let us know. But Ken, that will be in uh, one week. Well, I have a few things I got to take care of first. So why don't we make it in seven days? Mm, okay, fine. One week. 
Yeah, let, let's do that. Okay, everyone, we'll see you in one week on The Real.